In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the most recent admission statistics for none other than Stanford University. I'm going to be sharing their acceptance rate, the behind the scenes factors that influence their admissions decisions, admission facts and the cost of attendance, and statistics on the student life and diversity at Stanford. If you're new to my channel, hey, my name is Dylan Nellis. I am your Gen Z college admissions coach over at Next Gen Admit. We help high achieving students just like you craft standout applications that get accepted to your dream schools. So if that sounds like something that you want, then stick around for this video. And also I have some free resources that are gonna make this process so much easier for you. My team and I did a ton of work, so you don't have to. We literally went through all the different common data sets for a bunch of different colleges and compiled all of the factors in admissions into one spreadsheet that I'm gonna give you for free. Cause every college weighs admissions factors differently. Some colleges care more about your essays. Some colleges care more about your academic Academics. Some colleges take into account your state or your geographical location and some colleges don't. We packed all that information into our spreadsheet called the College Data Vault. You can check it out at nextgenadmit.com vault or just visit the description below. And without further ado, let's talk about Stanford's admission statistics. Stanford is located in Palo Alto, California. So in the Bay Area, about an hour south of San Francisco. It is a private co-ed institution and they are on the quarter system in terms of their academics. If you know me, you know that I went to Stanford so I can speak to a lot of what I'm about to say in this video. And the quarter system is a very interesting and unique part of Stanford, which just means that everything happens really freaking fast. Instead of being on the semester system where you have two sets of classes in a year, you're on the quarter system, which actually means not four, but three sets of classes each year. So we have a fall quarter, a winter quarter, and a spring quarter. Summer quarter is usually where we take a vacation, but if you wanna enroll in summer courses, you can do that too. The total number of undergraduate students enrolled at Stanford is 7,904. They have a student faculty ratio of six to one and a retention rate of 98.2%. Pretty good. If they're dropping out of Stanford, it's usually because they're starting a startup but not always. Now let's get into their acceptance rate. Stanford has been notoriously gatekeepy about their acceptance rates recently, which for an understandable reason. They don't want their super freaking low acceptance rates to drive people away from even applying. They want people to believe that yes, you still have a chance of going to Stanford, just try anyways. But let's talk about the actual stats behind all of that. For most other colleges, we can find data on the class of 2029 acceptance rates, but for Stanford, we can't get our hands on it yet. But the most recent and up-to-date data that we have is for the class of 2028. So not that long ago. This is a pretty good benchmark. Their overall acceptance rate, drum roll please, is 3.61%. That year, they received 57,326 applicants. And out of those, only admitted 2,067. Now, it is true that the acceptance rate for restrictive early action, that cycle, is gonna be different than the cycle that was regular decision. But we don't have data on that right now. So we're working with what we have. Typically what we see for most colleges though, is that the acceptance rates are gonna be higher for early action than they are for regular decision. But don't get it twisted. This doesn't necessarily mean it is going to be easier for you to get in early. It just means that the pool of people applying early tend to be the ones who have their stuff together and are likely to be more qualified. So the people that you would be competing with would be more competitive than in regular decision. But regular decision, there's a whole bunch more people also. So with this 3.61 acceptance rate, we can infer that it's pretty difficult to get into Stanford. That's why I make videos on my channel and offer the resources and support that I do at Next Gen Admit, because I wanna help you reach your dreams and learn something about yourself in the process. Let's peel back the curtain and reveal the factors that are influencing your admissions decision. Based on Stanford, published common data set, this can be broken down into three categories. Very important, considered, and not considered. This is what Stanford considers very important in their admissions process. The academic rigor of your high school classes, your class rank, your GPA, letters of recommendation, college essays, extracurricular activities, 
your talent or ability, and your character or your personal qualities. Character is so important, guys. They are literally evaluating you based on who you are as a person. Yeah, your values. And that's why you gotta make sure that that's clear in your college essays, and that is everything that I teach as a coach. Now, here are the factors that fall under the category of considered. Your standardized test scores, your interview, your first-generation status, your alumni relation to the school, although that one might be changing soon with the policies around legacy admins, your geographical residence, your volunteer work, and your work experience. Now here are the things that Stanford does not consider in admissions. They don't consider your state residency, your religious affiliation, or your level of interest. Surprise, surprise, they don't measure demonstrated interest because they can probably assume if you're applying to Stanford, you wanna go there. With that all being said, if you are planning on applying to Stanford, then here are some admission facts to know. Stanford's application deadline is January 5th. They do have a restrictive early action option, which means that you can apply early, but you can't apply early to other schools, except they do have some exceptions of other schools that you could also apply early to, so read the fine print. If you are applying REA, the application deadline is November 1st. And as of recent news, they do require your SAT or ACT scores in order to be considered for admission. There is a $100 application fee. Now, in terms of fees that they have once you are enrolled at Stanford, their tuition cost as of now is $67,731 per year. There is $813 of required fees. And for your food and housing on campus, that costs $22,167. But don't be discouraged because Stanford has really, really generous financial aid. And just to prove how generous they are with their financial aid, the total amount of need-based scholarships and grants that were awarded to students is $264,000,000. $984,557. That is a lot. And now the total amount of non-need-based scholarships and grants awarded to students is $9,648,599. Hey, if you demonstrate financial need and Stanford wants you, we'll pay for you. Ooh, now let's cover the GPA breakdown of admitted students. This is a question I get all the time. People are so worried about their GPA. And this is just gonna prove to you that you don't necessarily have to have the perfect GPA to get into a school like Stanford. The percentage of enrolled students at Stanford with a high school GPA of 4.0 is 73.3%. So that is yes, the majority, but not all. The percent of students with a GPA between 3.75 to 3.99 is 16.5%. A GPA of 3.5 to 3.74 is 6.7%. A GPA of 3.25 to 3.49 is 3% of enrolled students. A GPA of 3.0 to 3.24 is 0.3% of enrolled students. And lastly, a GPA of 2.5 to 2.99 is 0.3% of enrolled students. Okay, so if there is a benchmark, looking at the statistics alone, there does seem to be a benchmark that no one who is enrolled at Stanford had less than a 2.5 GPA when they were in high school. Now let's talk about the statistics on Stanford's student life. The percent of undergraduates at Stanford who are from out of state, so not California, but excluding international students is 57.1%. That's really interesting actually, because I just did the statistic videos for Duke and MIT, and that was a completely different number. Maybe that's also because California is very populated as a state, so it makes sense that around half, little less than half, are from California, and a little more than half are from out of state. The percentage of men who join fraternities is 20.9%, and the percentage of women who join sororities is 24.9%. And I can definitely speak to this having gone there. The Greek life at Stanford is not that huge or crazy or prioritized, and that's kind of nice. Like, yeah, it exists, and if that's your vibe, go ahead and do that. But if it's not your vibe, you don't have to join a sorority or a fraternity in order to have friends and community. There are so many lovely and different ways in which you can have community. 
As for the percent of students who live in college owned or college affiliated housing, that is 96%, a lot. <laughs> Which leaves the percentage of students who live off campus being 4%. Stanford does offer guaranteed housing for all four years of undergrad, which is very nice. And that's also why people often call it the Stanford bubble, because we all just like live on campus in this bubble and people may not go off campus as much as they would in other schools. That doesn't mean we sit in our dorms all day and do nothing, absolutely not. We know how to have fun. But one of the positives is that it means we have a nice, pretty central community. It's very easy, it's very walkable. You can see your friends in a matter of minutes or seconds. Now let's talk student diversity. There are 965 international students enrolled as an undergrad at Stanford. And now I'm going to give the ethnic and racial breakdown from highest to lowest. Okay, that's actually not what I expected. That is so interesting. There are 2,199 Asian students, 1,754 white students, 1,501 Hispanic or Latino students, 724 students of two or more races. I would fall under this category. There tends to be a lot of Asians at Stanford, you know, students who are mixed with white and Asian. I don't know why. There are 644 black or African American students, 62 American indigenous or Alaska native students, 39 students whose race or ethnicity is unknown, and 16 native Hawaiian or Pacific Islander students. So what do you guys think about these statistics? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, also, since you're applying to Stanford, you're gonna have to write these Stanford specific supplemental essays. And I put together a comprehensive guide that breaks it all down and I'm giving it away for free. As always, you can find it in the description below. I really do think it's gonna be so helpful for you guys. And if you wanna show the draft of your college essay to me or my team, just visit nextgenadmit.com. That's all for the Stanford admissions statistics video. There's plenty more where that came from. From. So if you want even more admissions insight, you can check out all the other videos on this channel. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.